Having more information available to us off-grid is always a good thing. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So one of the things I've been working on over the last couple of weeks is importing more offline data into Yak. Yak is already a fabulous application that's very capable with offline maps. Even if you're not interested in APRS, I suggest you take a look at Yak just for the offline mapping capability, if nothing else. So as you can see on my screen now, I've got all kinds of objects that are mapped out for me. You'll see my location right here, indicated by the little laptop that I'm running currently. If we click on one of these that's got the picnic icon, you're going to see the POTA park number and the name of that individual park. And we'll get to showing you in just a second how I got all of this information into Yak. If we take a look right up here, in at this icon, this is a repeater. If we click on it, we get the repeater name, we get the receive frequency, and we get the tone. And then if we look right over here at this one, this is a little satellite icon. If I click on that, this one happens to be a Winlink packet gateway. So you get the full call that you need to uh, talk to that particular gateway, and then you get the frequency and the mode that they're running either 1200 or 9600. And all of that information can be helpful to us in various scenarios. Let me show you exactly how I made that happen. We'll cover the application and then I'll show you how easy it is to get this installed. Now the first thing I want to do before we jump into this tutorial is I'm going to go down to my wireless connection and just turn that off. That way you'll know that I am working offline. You'll see I got the disconnected message right up there in the top. I'm going to jump over to the start menu and I'm going to type out POS, which is short for POSIT Generator. We'll go ahead and open that up. You're going to get a terminal window right here so that we can choose which objects we want to place on the map. So we've got a choice for 2 meter and 440 gateways. We've got a choice for VARA HF gateways. Those are both Winlink. We got a choice in number three for voice repeaters. And number four will generate the POTA uh, parks for a particular state. So let's start with number one right there. And we'll take a look at the packet gateways in my area. So I'm going to tell it uh, number one here for packet gateways. It's going to ask me the max distance to search. We'll just say 100 kilometers. And I don't have a GPS. If you have a GPS installed, it'll actually pull your current grid from the GPS uh, if you're running 7.3 Linux. Since I don't have a GPS installed on this system, I'm going to tell it no. I don't want to use that current grid. It's going to ask me which grid I want to use. We'll give it my current grid square and then press uh, enter on the keyboard. Now there's 2300 or just over 2300 possibilities. It is filtering through all of those right now and creating a list that's going to be not only in the terminal right here, but it's also going to put that out on my desktop. It does give you this quick list here though of packet gateways near you. Right down here in the bottom left corner, you'll see that packet gateway list. Now, I'm not going to import those at the moment. We're going to go ahead and create a couple of more of these files so you can see exactly how easy this is. Once again, from the main screen, this time I'm going to choose option three that will allow me to generate a POS file for all of the local repeaters in my area. So I'll choose number three. Now, I already have Tennessee downloaded and that is selected as my current working list. So we'll just choose option three here to use the state of Tennessee. If you didn't have a list downloaded or you just installed this, you would choose option one here to download a new state repeater list. Since I've already got that, I'm going to bypass that selection. And we'll just choose number three. Now you get two different options here. You can either search by your specific county or you can search for all repeaters in the state of Tennessee. I will warn you, if you type in all right here, it becomes a bit overwhelming 
on the YAC map with all of the repeaters in my state. So instead of doing that, I'm going to give it my uh, county so that I only get the ones in my county. We'll press return and it tells me that that has been placed on the desktop. It's this Tennessee-Rutherford-Repeater-List.pos file. Now, let's go ahead and do POTA and then we'll import all of this into YAC. This time, I will choose option 4 for the POTA list. And it's going to tell me that I need to either download or I can create the list. I already have this list downloaded, the database for all of the POTA parts in the US. It's only about two and a half megabytes for the entire database. But I'm going to choose option two here for creating the file, and I want to do it again for the state of Tennessee. So two letter state abbreviation, I'm just going to give it TN and press return. 242 total parks have been found, and it is working through processing that list. Doesn't take too, uh, too long here. And we will get this information right here, telling me that once again, that file has been placed on my desktop, and it's called POTA-US-Tennessee. So now that we have all of this, let's import this data into YAC. The first thing we need to do is come up to File, Load, Objects and Items. We'll click on that. Remember, that was located on our desktop, so we'll click on the desktop right there. And the first thing we'll load, how about the packet gateways? So I'll just highlight that one and click OK. And that will load those packet gateways onto the YAC map. So this makes it very easy for me to see. This is where I'm located right now, and these are the closest gateways to me. So it gives me a pretty good idea if I can make it into that particular gateway. I know that I can always hit WC4 EOC. If we click on that, it's going to give us the frequency and the mode. Now, if you wanted to know how far away uh, you are from that repeater, in YAC, you can actually right click and come down to this option right here, show line of sight from me. And it will pull up this box right here telling you that that is roughly 35 kilometers from my current location. So just another handy tool that we've got available to us inside of YAC. Let's go ahead and load up another one of those lists. So again, file, load, objects and items. This time we'll load the repeaters. So I'm going to select that Tennessee Rutherford repeater list and say OK. And you'll see that it's dropped two repeaters on the list. This one down here on the south side of town, and this one that is over northwest of my current location. So again, it gives us all of that data right here on the map. Now, last but not least, let's go ahead and load up that POTA file. Now, this one, uh, we can't separate POTA by county because that's not information that the database gives us. Oh, one other thing I do want to point out right here. Make sure when you're importing these into YAC, you leave this set to private. Should you choose one of these others and you actually have this connected to the Internet or to a radio for RF, it would start broadcasting out all of these objects that you're putting in. Uh, so you don't want to do that. So just leave this set to private and it will only be available on your map. Let's click OK right here. And that just loaded all of those POTA parks onto the map. If we click on one of those, again, we get the park number and the park name right there. So it's easy peasy to figure out where you're at once you can put this stuff on a map. Now, getting this installed is super, super simple. When you get to this page, and I will leave a link to this particular GitHub page down in the description below. Once you get here, just scroll down until you see install. I'm going to come over to these little two boxes and click this. That will tell me that that information has been copied. I'm going to open up the terminal, and I'm simply going to paste that command that we just copied into the terminal. We'll go ahead and press enter, and it's going to take it about, oh, I don't know, 30 seconds to get this installed. It will ask for your pseudo password, and I actually see a mistake that I'll get fixed before you guys view this video. I'm just going to go ahead and give it my pseudo password, press return, and the installation is done. It's that simple. So now if I open up the menu, I can start typing POSIT, and it will come up as soon as I click the return button. It's going to open that application.
Now, I realize this isn't the only way to get this information offline. We could use other methods if we wanted to. I was really interested, though, in importing this data into a tool that I already use on a regular basis. Having it available to me in Yak is very beneficial. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.